Good morning. So my public lecture series is one of our prominent educational outreach programs intended to share scholarly insights of contemporary issues, cutting edge research, science and technology policy, innovations, culture, tradition, and science within the society at large. Somaya Public Lecture are organized by Somaya Institute for Research and Consultancy under the directorship of Vice Chancellor Sir. We bring eminent teachers, researchers, policy makers, educationalists, scientists, writers, jurists, innovators, and social workers to offer an insider's view of their own area of work, recent and future trends to the cross-section of the society. On behalf of the entire CIRAC team and Dean Research, I, Parvati, welcome you all for today's public lecture by Dr. Siddhagopan, a researcher, a mentor, and an institutional builder. Before we begin, some basic session rules. Kindly switch your mobile phone into a silent mode so that you don't distract the speaker. Listen and assimilate information rather than discussing among yourself to respect the speaker. Kindly pose the questions at the end of the talk. Please raise your hand or rise so that our team will reach out to you with the mic. Before we begin, officially, can, may I request you all to stand for the campus prayer. I request the speaker to please be on the dais. And I also request our provost, Dr. Raghunath Shivgankar, to kindly deliver the presidential address and introduction of the speaker. Dear faculty and students, good morning to all of you. And welcome to this Somaya public lecture, which is today getting delivered by one of the distinguished academicians in India, Professor Sadgopalan. 
he was the founder director of uh, IIIT Bangalore. But before that, uh, he was faculty at IIT Kanpur. Uh, I, I am Bangalore, IIT Madras, and later he became faculty in IIIT Bangalore and founder director of IIIT Bangalore. He had very vast experience in academic uh, canvas in India, though he is an IT professional, basically. So I think uh, when we are entering the hall, Professor Sadgopalan was asking me, it is interesting to see that so many students are interested in the Indian education system. In fact, Professor Sadgopalan is not only educationist, but he is a very well-established IT engineer also. And all of you will be certainly interested in IT-related aspects of higher education. So today, as we know, that the higher education system in India is actually going through a transformation. We got this NEP 2020, all of you must be aware of, the new education policy came. Many radical reforms have been proposed in the new education policy. And uh, technology is going to play a very, very important role in the years to come in the education system. So with that canvas, I think uh, we are having a very uh, apt event that Professor Sadgopalan is going to address the issue of the higher education and technology in post-independent India. So let me welcome uh, Professor Sadgopalan to deliver this distinguished Sumaya public lecture. Thank you. Good morning. So it is a pleasure, honor, delight to be with all of you. And I think it's so nice to see that a place like Somaya, you have students and faculty from across the disciplines coming together. So when we were walking from the guest house, our Parvati madam got a call from your other campus, somebody from Department of Physiotherapy conveying that he or she is attending it. So I was quite happy. I think that is, okay. So for some of you who are the youngsters, you know, we often hear the word IT. And whenever you think of IT, what comes to your mind? What do you think IT immediately connotes to you? You see, for we, the older generation, it is the income tax, <laughs> okay? And for the current generation, it is information technology. But quite often we forget that actually IT stands for India's tomorrow. And it is not my quote. It is a quote from Athal Bihari Vajpayee. Okay, way back in 1999, some of us were writing something called IT policy. And, you know, so at that time, he said. And the reason why Professor Shivgankar was so nice, was very kind to me, and the reason why many of us spend time with you people is, India's tomorrow is sitting here. We are all India's yesterday, okay? Many of you are India's today, but I do see good number of India's tomorrow, okay? So that is the reason why we get so excited about, okay? So what I plan to do uh, today is simple that Dr. Ashyakran Pillai was very kind, my longtime friend, and he said that, come and give a talk. So I was just thinking, what would be the right stuff? And he did mention to me that it is actually people across the disciplines. So I thought that something would be interesting. And I think the last uh, maybe about 18 hours, I have been having unusual, it's so nice feeling Dr. Ifran was nice, and thanks to Dr. Parvati, she seems to have a magic of being touching you at many, many times in many different channels. And then it was very touching to find that Ifran met me at the airport. See, normally people send their cars, that's it, right? But here is a senior faculty member coming, and much more interesting, he came with a bouquet right at the airport. Normally people give the bouquet at the time of arrival in the campus. So nice, I think, keep it up. And uh, so Parvati ma'am, so thank you so for all the help and support. So what I will do is that approximately about 45 minutes is what I will do the talk so that you get some time to ask questions. Because you know, these days in many places, I almost do the opposite. I just don't talk. I only answer questions. Because I find that it's much more useful way. But sometimes, you know, a talk makes it really easier because you start with something so that you can actually ask 
questions. So do uh, feel comfortable asking questions and remember the famous Nobel laureate's quotation. There are no stupid questions. Okay, all questions are great questions. Okay, so, so what I will do is that I will spend about a couple of minutes. I think it is also important. I like this. This is something which I borrowed from one of my students. One of my students wrote this topic a couple of years back. He said, look, this is the talk you should give. So idea is, what I know best is I and T put together, right? So I call it India, IT, IIT, triple IT. Okay, so this is what I know it well. So this is what, so I call it higher education in the post-independent India and technology. And remember, both of them are very large areas. Higher education is big. So within that, to a large extent, what I talk of is higher technical education, within that higher IT education. And then once again, technology is huge. Okay, So I can't do justice for all of them. So I actually talk about what is broadly known as information technology. But I will spend about a couple of minutes setting the context, particularly for a younger generation, what India is and what India was. It's also important, we should not forget. Then we will get into what is that IT has contributed to India. Because you see, a lot of times you hear the IT, but I think it is also important to get the perspective with some numbers. Then, you know, it is interesting. Lots of people talk about IITs, but a lot of people do not know IIT. It is also important to know what makes an IIT and what, what impact IITs have done to the society. And of course, I had been personally involved with Triple IIT Bangalore and indirectly with a large number of other Triple IITs also. I will talk about the Triple IIT system and then kind of conclude, okay? So, so this is, I will spend a few minutes. I want you to kind of Look at this. This is sometimes, you know, we forget. So I am not a person who think that, look, we should uh, chest beat and we have done a lot, etc. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. No doubt about it. But we have come a long way. See, I am talking of two of the social sectors. See, education and healthcare are the two important healthcare for any economy, any enterprise, any country. And two dimensions, as a country, this is what we have. So when we got independence in 1947, our literacy was just 12%. These are all data from fairly reliable source, okay? So this is from the parliamentary source. Some of them I would have taken from Wikipedia. So as much as possible, so, you know, but none of them are imagined numbers, none of them are opinions, okay? They are actual data, okay? And you know, sometimes the data could differ, okay? 12% could be 14%, but doesn't matter. Again, 74%, but you know, it's amazing. Our literacy rate, we have improved six times in the 60 years, 70 years, okay? And what is interesting for many of you to realize is, quite often you will hear amazing stories about Singapore. It's great, it's a great country, I love that country, I keep visiting. But remember, it is not even half Mumbai, right? And look at the last line. At the time of independence, we were just 34 crores, 340 million. Today, we are 1.4 billion, 140 crores. For nearly four times increased population to have reached this level of literacy means that we have achieved something. And we, the teachers, we can feel justly proud. We have contributed maybe a small, 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 small percent, 0.000001 percent. But nonetheless, as a teacher, I feel humbled and happy that somewhere along, in spite of so many deficiencies, and you know, if you want to be a critic, you can say, we still have 26% illiterate, isn't it a shame? It is a shame. No ifs and buts about it. But the fact that we have actually been able to achieve. But what is even more dramatic to me, just look at the life expectancy. This captures in one number, 
the overall health of a nation, overall health of a population, overall health of the people. Okay? So we were barely 32 years of life expectancy. We have come to 7-0. In fact, in the lighter vein, we are making India a kind of old Indians, you know, <laughs> many of us belong to that category, so we are actually going to have, we might actually have other problems, because there will be geriatric problems, a lot of old guys will be sitting around not getting out, and it is making difficult for youngsters, because you have to work hard to make us live, right? So that is, uh, but at the same time, what it means is, the health of the nation has dramatically improved. Once again, factor this, Life expectancy have gone up from 32 to 70 when the population has increased three times more. So it actually emphasizes the fact that we have done a few things well. So I thought that, you know, this is something which we should not forget. Okay. So let me also tell you what has happened because sometimes, you know, it is good to kind of tell you things which you can relate to. Okay. Once upon a time, Okay, just about 46 years, about 8 years back, I landed in the United States. So I thought you should know how life was. You know that as graduate students, we are allowed by Reserve Bank of India to carry foreign exchange equivalent to 100 rupees. Those days, dollar was not 90 rupees, dollar was 7.5 rupees. So about 12 dollars is what we carried in our pocket and landed in a country called United States. More interesting, in my four years of PhD degree, I made one phone call to my home. More interesting, many of my classmates did not even make that one call because they never had a phone. Right? And you make maybe four phone calls every hour, if not every day. Okay? And it was a princely sum, you know, to call home was $14 of AT&T, and our scholarship was $250, okay? So just to give you some, okay, so how far we have come. And, you know, it's interesting. I entered Chicago airport, so-called O-R-D, -O -R from Chennai to O-R-D, and to go to a place called Purdue University where I studied, and then, the person at the counter was reasonably condescending. He said, why have you come here? To take away my job? Right? So there was a fair amount of what I would say, feeling that we are taking away their jobs. You know, I can understand, you know, because, you know, the people at the immigration counter and all, they don't make enough money. And I also realize that, you know, some of these things you feel and you realize only when you see. Because to some extent, India was a poor country, much poorer than what it is today. To be poor in a poor country is one thing. To be poor in a rich country is much harder. And that is precisely what this meant. And then more interesting, I go to a haircut and the barber asked me, where are you from? I said, Madras, India. He did not recognize both. He said, look, is it close to Bangkok? <laughs> That's exactly what he asked, okay? So what it meant is that India was just non-existent in people's minds. We just did not matter, okay? That is what we were just during independence, okay? So now, I think, you know, a lot of times people are keep asking me, you know, there is too much noise about made about this IT, 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 okay? And, uh, you know, the IT professionals talk a lot. And then, you know, when Google fires or Microsoft fires, it's a big news. But, you know, people are losing jobs left, right, and right everywhere, but nobody writes about them. So why is it that IT is getting, is IT getting undue importance? Okay? Partly, yes. I think... Uh, the folks in Times of India and Economic Times and other newspapers seem to be having a special love for IT. So if it is happens in IT, they write more about us. But at the same time, there is something which IT has contributed. And particularly for you youngsters, 
you should know these numbers so that you can get some idea and don't get swayed because it is always numbers are good because numbers speak the truth and remember this country's motto is satyameva jayate so go by numbers and you, you need to have the right numbers okay so one of the reasons why it gets its importance in fact we should give credit to you know this is something which sometimes we don't do i think you know there are good politicians and bad politicians and to some extent it is true of everything right there are good everything right but i think in india we make too much fun about the bad politicians and we don't give credit to good politicians so madhavar of sindhya is a person who actually termed the t as the third t okay again for you younger generation the first t which contributed to india's export for quite some time happens to be something called textiles the second t is the t that you and i drink the third t is information technology so it was madhavar of sindhya who actually thought that he thought that it should also follow other t good or bad it doesn't matter but you all know that not very far from here there is a town called amdabad amdabad right amdabad had something called a textile research institute and you know i come from tamil nadu there is a town called coimbatore which also is famous for textile coimbatore has something called sitra south india technical institute the i i the triple it is formulation was based on athira and sitra so he thought just as textile need institute helped maybe the institute would help the it industry it has really helped or not there is a different issue but you know it is important for you to know so what happened is that even though textile has been an export earner textile export has been couple of billions of dollars to today is about 40 45 50 it varies considerably you know when bangladesh came we went down again we are getting back a little bit 40 50 60 billion dollars t is another 40 50 60 billion dollars but it is 220 billion dollars so in the span of about 20 years the it growth is 100 fold increase i think that is the reason why it gets lot more important so you should know this okay and what does it translate to because it is also important you know going back to the slide which i mentioned that we were allowed to carry 12 dollars simply because we did not have foreign exchange you know what is the foreign exchange we have in this country today we are close to 600 billion dollars that means for a country of billion people we have for each person there is 600 dollars here okay so those days we were not allowed to take beyond 12 dollars because we did not have that kind of a cushion and to a large extent contribution comes from it but i think personally as a professor what makes me feel happy see the dollars make the economist happy uh, dollars are important but to me what it means is lots and lots of my students are doing a great job because they all have great jobs jobs are extremely important so i could have quoted any number but uh, you know as professors we always go for what is called the prime source right i always look at the prime source so i just thought that you know infosys reports are easily available on the net so i could search so this is march 1997 31st of march 1997 infosys had 3148 persons and 31st of march of 2022 because 2023 is still not there right is 252169 so you could see the growth right if typically what in, in i could have taken tcs okay but all of them have similar kind of growth story a 100 fold increase in turnover a 100 fold increase in number of people okay and overall it's also interesting we were less than 3 lakh people employed in it industry in 1997 today we are 50 plus lakhs right so 50 plus lakhs fam people their families 
okay and that is what makes okay and in bangalore there is a joke there are two jokes maybe both of them are coined by my students i will quote the first one is that every second apartment owner is an it professional and every other car owner is an it professional and the second joke is interesting it is profitable to write software in bangalore it is even more profitable to house the software engineer it is even more profitable to transport the software engineer it is even more profitable to feed the software engineer with no intention to be uh, what is called gender non neutral it is best it is most profitable to give a haircut to a female software engineer or the wife of a male software engineer because i understand haircut for women is the markup prices are much higher than for men so, okay so so what i am trying to say is that is what it has done to this country so it is important for you to know i think you know people ask me this question remember banks used to have a big opposition to the computerization okay to such an extent banks union even forced people like professor rangarajan there was a dr rangarajan committee to say that look the maximum size of memory of a machine that was doing computerization cannot exceed 256 kilobytes or something like that that is the level to which we went but the opposition you know why it went because all the bank staff found their sons and daughters were working for tcs right so they realized that it is important for them to get it okay but i think i will quote some more stuff before i kind of get on to the next one so this is something which lot of people in india do not know but i thought it is important for you to know the three companies tcs iflux used to be a company started by a couple of iit bombay folks and now it is called oracle financial services it was acquired because was one of the first billion dollar acquisitions in india and infosys okay as per gartner these three banking software account for more than 50% of the global market share that means you walk across the country in the planet 200 plus countries and look at the bank accounts of individuals half more than half the bank accounts are powered by software from india and of course i am a proud bangalorean It so happens that this software gets written in bangalore of course quite a few of them are my students so it's good right so it's amazing right so something like this we never had to be actually able to impact globally okay second thing is that you know there is another interesting company called inmobi any of you have discovered this company called inmobi any hands go up okay go and discover it's interesting okay so this company focuses on mobile advertisement and in mobile advertisement you know who is the competitor to inmobi google so a company that can compete with google more interesting stuff is they have algorithms which are actually able to optimize the real estate space on the screen of a mobile phone okay and this is the first unicorn of this country this is bangalore based and it happens to be run founded by navin tiwari who happens to be son of professor tiwari who used to teach in iit kanpur so it's all the connections right but it's just amazing first software from india which got installed in more than 1 billion devices right just go and discover this interesting company 1 billion devices just so i can go on and on because there are so many such stories but it is important for you to okay and it has impacted unicorns there are 100 plus unicorns see those of you who possibly i'm sure most of you know but just to put you in the context unicorn is a company whose market value is more than a billion us dollar a billion us dollar is approximately 9000 crores a company whose market value is more than 9000 crores is called unicorn and in 2022 we created history in this country we had 100 plus unicorns in one year no other country had 
because in spite of covid etc okay and of course the joke in silicon valley is how do you start a startup okay get funding from silicon valley so called lakshmi and go to bangalore for developers saraswati from india okay so lakshmi from united states saraswati from india makes up a startup okay so that is how lots and lots of startups are made okay and of course you should say in what way it has impacted india it's also important for you to realize right we go up to 11:30 right no no whatever yes that's okay okay just want to be double sure okay okay you all know must have heard of this jam right jandan aadhar and mobile so what this jandan aadhar and mobile did see again another interesting iit iim person alok pandey so alok pandey was the person who was driving it during much of the time in the department of financial services you know in about 4 to 5 years we added 600 million bank accounts 600 million indians who did not have a bank account got a bank account thanks to this combination aadhar mobile and jandan project jandan was the name of the project of the department of financial services so i personally felt very happy because all the janitors in my institute i went and because i happened to be involved with the banks in so many banks in reserve bank npci etc etc so i actually told all of them i told the local bank united commercial bank at that time you should get all of them the account so they got all of them and then i asked them you know what does it feel so it is always important to know how they feel you know it is nice the director of the institutes got an account for us etc but actually they said sir you know it is very interesting we used to go to the bank once in a while for something or other but nobody kind of encourages us to come inside the bank because they thought that we were not the customers we will not be their customers today i am an account holder okay i walk in as their customer and their approach to us is very different because they realize that we are their customers so that was a touching moment for me because i felt so good that remember that no other country had done this because first of all there are only two countries with this population right and china had done it over a longer period of time 20 years but we managed to get it done in just 4 years okay i don't know how many of you kind of drive around right there is something called fast tag right so remember we used to kind of stop at the multiple toll booths pay the toll and go see a lot of things happened in this few years i still remember 1976 when we were driving around the interstate in united states and some of my friends in fact it so happened that the morning today morning he called me from chicago for something else i still recalling he said look will we have an interstate like driving in india in our lifetime we were convinced it will not happen in our lifetime because we need so many cars we need so many highways you know how is it you know but i just can't believe that in the last 20 years we have built nha more interesting we are actually making 2 million cars a year so i remember 1976 when i went for united states this country's car production was 29992 because there used to be a department called excise which will count every car because excise duty has to be paid so you have a number so less than 30000 cars to 2 million cars we export from my own town called chennai hyundai factory export 300000 cars right so we have changed right and fast tag as you move around so it just collect the tax so you know a typical madras to chennai Ch bangalore to chennai travel time gets reduced by 15 minutes just because of this because five places you have to stop it used to take average of 3 minutes nowadays it takes less than 60 seconds right and remember that behind the fast tag see singapore had a fast tag equivalent but it was far expensive it was costing 99 dollar 
but here there is a small little sticker that's it right and then it is linked to your bank account thanks to upi and it works because all these drivers have a mobile phone right again mobile phone a fast track you know we we collect about 177 crores every day. 177 crores of toll tax is collected every day with practically no human intervention. Okay, so that's what we the IT guys can genuinely feel. So that is what we have done. Okay, now comes the next 20 minutes. What is that IITs have done and what is triple ITs have done? Okay, so it is important for you to realize how the IITs came. And remember, this is something amazing, come to think about it. The then people in power, starting with Pandit Nehru, the whole bunch of people, education ministers, etc., they felt there is a need for institutes like IITs soon after independence. So the Sarkar Commission Committee report is in 1946. You can go and read it, it is there on the net, go to the Ministry of Education. Nice. Kadakpur happened in 60, 51, Bombay happened in 58, you know, there was a long gap. Then it quickly, the Madras, Kanpur, and uh, the Delhi came, okay? So, but what is interesting is, IIT Bombay had collaboration with Russia, IIT Delhi had with UK, IIT Madras has with Germany, and IIT Kanpur has with US. Because I spent 20 years in IIT Kanpur, so I know more, so I will spend more time about the IIT Kanpur. It's interesting. IIT Kanpur was helped by nine premier universities, including MIT. Okay? And at one point in time, there were more than 50 professors, and many of them are what, what in Hindi they call Durandhar, right? Giants. Glowians, okay? Those kind of people spend significant amount of time in Kanpur. And Kanpur was tough. Uttar Pradesh itself is backward state. And Kanpur relatively is supposed to be industrial town, but you know, we were actually outside of the town. Reaching them was difficult. So amidst a lot of cows and uh, dogs and bullocks and bullock carts, etc., etc. And you might have seen newspapers, you know, the first computer was actually transported in a bullock cart from the airport to IIT Kanpur. Okay, so that is the kind of lot of stories. Okay, but it is amazing that an institute like that could be developed. And, you know, from the IITs, how many things happened? You know, the IIT system had a phenomenal impact on the entire higher education system. The semester system came from IITs. The grading system came from IITs, the A, B, C, D grade, instead of a numeric grades. The CGPA, okay? And then remember earlier, either you passed or failed. That means you passed the first year and moved to the second year, or you repeat the first year. They said, you don't have to. If you have failed one subject, you make up only that subject. So subject-based passing that came from IITs. Okay? And then internal assessment completely came from IITs. You don't have a university level examination. Okay? And a whole bunch of them, you know, the concept of lecture plus tutorial plus labs and, and a credit system which measures the effort of the lecture, the effort of the lab, effort of the tutorials came from the IIT system, okay? So IIT system had phenomenal impact on the entire higher education system. So today, to a large extent, what you take it for granted, and of course, the concept of a placement, place, the institute helping you with a placement, so those things were just not part of the traditional university system. So, and then, of course, the research-led education, you know, we always say that you need to create knowledge, and then distribute knowledge. Distribution of knowledge is teaching, creation of knowledge is research. You need, to cre you need to create before you can distribute. Otherwise, you become a teaching shop, right? You become a training house. How do you create those things, okay? So all these things kind of came from the IIT system. And of course, for a long time, we were just five IITs, okay? From 1951, IIT Kadakpur to 1994, 43 years, right? And then something happened. Gauhati happened, IIT Gauhati. And then, of course, the IIT Rudki happened. And then in the last few years, 
lot of IITs have come to such an extent that lots of people, old people think that we are diluting the brand, etc., etc. But I personally feel that, you know, I think a country of our size possibly need 100 IITs. That's my personal view. Okay. But today we have 23 IITs. The last one to be born is Goa 2016. And of course, Professor Shabankar knows that, you know, even today, they have not even identified the land. Forget about the campus. You know. But, you know, that is what, you know, we are an interesting country. We do amazing stuff. We will actually send uh, things to the moon, okay, etc., etc. But, you know, we, okay, some IITs, we do it like this. Some IITs, we just mess it up. But that's part of it. And then we have also created, you know, if I can use a word, you know, very strong word, but nonetheless, you know, I'm a Unix guy, right? In Unix, we use a called a demon, right? So equivalent of that is demon, right? There's a demon called J-E-E. <laughs> Why is it a demon? Because it makes it so difficult for so many of people to get in. Okay? Just in a... In a lighter vein, you know, this is something which you guys should know. So, 1991, IIT Kanpur director asked us to do a small little back of the envelope calculation. We did a back of the envelope calculation. 1991, a typical IIT budget was 18, 19 crores. There were only five IITs. So, the IIT's budget was 100 crores. But you know what was the coaching business for JEE? It was 1,000 crores. So JE coaching was a 10 times more than the IIT annual budget. And we thought that was crazy, etc. But we did a back of the annual class in 2014. By 2014-15, you know, already 20 plus IITs have come. The IIT budgets have become much larger, 200 crores. So 20 into 20, 4,000 crore. Lo and behold, the JE coaching business is more than 10 times. This is 47,000 crores as per economic times. Right? That is why I call JE as a demon. But anyway, so. And 16,000 seats are allotted through JOSA for the 23 IIT, 23 IITs. Okay? Okay. So now look at these numbers. We are a country of 1.4 billion people. All the IITs put together we still admit only 16,000 students, okay? A large American university like Rutgers admits 20,000 students. And you know, there is even a larger example. If you go to the NY, New York City University, New York City University, one of the largest urban clusters, it has a total number of 450,000 students. 450,000. I just checked in the morning also for, I just wanted to be doubly sure I'm quoting the right numbers. I checked on the website, 450,000, okay? So we are still, still small. We still have so much to go. So I think that is, you know, you must have heard about what is special about India. You make any statement about India, which is true, the opposite is also true. <laughs> that is India, right? So we have grown a lot. We have a lot to grow. And what is the immediate future of IITs? At least my way of looking at it is, I think a lot of things are happening together. IITs are expanding. IITs are kind of putting their focus. And we are also realizing that we need to get interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, and et cetera, et cetera. Lots of interesting things are happening. Schools of designs are happening. IIT Bombay had one of the very first school of design. And then IIT Kadapur has a school of law. And recently, thanks to significant investment from private entrepreneurs, IASC and IIT Kanpur are getting into a medical school. So it is interesting. I think next few years, IITs are going to be interesting. I also find that some of the IITs want to be even among the, you know, there's a very interesting, you have what is called first generation IITs, second generation IITs, third generation IITs. The five IITs are first generation IITs. Rootki, BHU, Guwahati, they're all second generation. And the Goa, et cetera, uh, you know, Palaka, they're the third generation. There's a nice healthy competition among them. And some of the third generation IITs want to give a hard time to the first generation IITs. I think IIT Hyderabad is talking of 20,000 students soon. Okay, whereas, you know, some of the old IITs will still remain 4,000, 5,000. So it's interesting. Okay, and what is that? 
What is triple IT? This is just one more I, okay, or two I's to three I's, okay. As I mentioned, this was originally our uh, minister for aviation, okay. So his idea, okay. So the third T, okay, that's the reason why he located it in Gwalior because it happens to be his town. The first triple IT to actually happen. And you know, once again, what happens is there are multiple ways of doing instantiation, you know. So what happens, you announce it, you put a geo. But before it take off, it so happened that Hyderabad and Bangalore, we took off faster, so we actually, and within that, you know, there is always a brownie point, right? So Triple IT Bangalore, we decided to go with the masters initially. So we graduated the first set of students. Triple IT Hyderabad had a B.Tech program. They graduated four years later. So we graduated the first student. And Gwalior took a little while to actually get people, buildings, etc., etc. And so what happened was that the Triple IT Gwalior and the Triple IT Allahabad were under the Ministry of Human Resource Development, MHRD. Now it's called Department of Education. The Triple IT Bangalore and Hyderabad, we had interesting chief ministers who were actually competing who are also thinking differently, SM Krishna in Karnataka and Naidu Garu in Andhra Pradesh, and they were acting like CEOs. So they actually went to the industry and said, you guys write some checks, we will write some checks, and industry said, whatever check you write, I will write a matching check, and the industry folks thought that government will not do much, so we don't have to, but they said, government surprised them, government wrote a check, so it became very difficult, embarrassing for them not to write a check, but a lot of it is history. But good thing is, it took off real fast. And part of the reason why it happened in Bangalore and Hyderabad was that IT companies were there, they actually needed people, and they found it was, it was their own interest because they were actually going to get out high quality people. But lots of other things also happened. Ambani has put together an interesting institute in Ahmedabad called DAIICT, Dhirubhai Ambani Institute of Information and Communication Technology. It happened just a couple of years later. And in Trivandrum, Triple IT DM happened. And then the Triple IT Bhuvaneshwar happened. I still remember that it was a chance meeting with Navin Patnayak and you know that in the mind tree person, Subrato Bakshi. He said, Chalo Hamare Saat. So I went with him. He said, Look, We'll make a slick presentation. We made some four slides. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's very interesting to see some of the chief ministers, the way they act. So the meeting was there. Next day, the reply to Bhuvaneshwar was there. Okay? So, and right in Pune, Phenolex company wanted to do something interesting. They created something called I-Square IT. Okay? So lot. And then came one bureaucrat. He happened to be the former election commission chairman. I forget his name. Okay, so he was in the planning commission, not session. This was a uh, uh, Uriya gentleman, which, okay, so anyway, I'll remember. So he is the person who made a proposal sitting in planning commission called 20 Triple IT project. And he came up with this jargon called PPP, private public partnership. So 20 Triple ITs came. So today, we have in you know, all about, depending on how you count, some of the institutes, you know, the, the IIIT DM got merged into something else. And there was one IIIT in Calcutta which closed, okay? And then there was one IIIT, you know, it's really interesting. There was a time when it was fashioned to start IIITs. And Vaishnav Devi, Ma Vaishnav Devi Trust created a IIIT. Okay, never took off, okay? So lots of them, I really, okay. But give and take, there are close to about 30 of them. About 6,000 seats are done through JOSA. Okay, and my feeling is that it will go through some consolidation phase in the next few years, how it will be. But what is that IITs have done to India and what is that triple IITs have done to India? Then we will have time for questions, okay? So, you know, it's, it, it's interesting that a lot of time people will make criticism, criticize. They said, oh, IITs are big white elephants, they consume a lot of money. And particularly you go to university departments, they have a right. Because universities get such paltry sums of grants from the government, relatively IITs get a larger amount. But even then it is much smaller. So just to give you some numbers, I was teaching, so I can tell you with some confidence. I was teaching in for a year at Rutgers, 1997. The Rutgers budget was 4.2 billion US dollar. Right? We multiply by 9,000 crores. So you get the number, right? 
and look at the IIT budget, 200 crore per year. Right? All IITs put together is still much, much smaller. So in that sense, but compared to the investment that has gone into IITs, we have done amazing stuff. You all know that internet came to India through a project called Earnet. I jokingly tell people who are the old time programmers, you have a variable declaration called int. Int, ERNet is internet, right? So that is how internet came to this country. And many of you would have used the NPTEL, which is a large project, okay? And right during COVID, we kind of surprised the world. In fact, we surprised all of us. Engineers and doctors have never worked together in this country. COVID brought us together. There was a ventilator project at IIT Kanpur. Bottoms up, grounds up. A ventilator was designed, prototype, made, manufactured, supplied in large numbers, all within a year, year or two. Okay, so it happened. Okay, so of course you all would have seen the last few days, there is a lot of news going around. Bharat OS, called Bhar OS, okay? So we are trying to build a competitor to iOS and Android. Will we succeed? We don't know. But I think we should try. If we don't try, what is the chance of success? Maybe we'll succeed, who knows? You know, we had a director by name, Professor Sampat in IIT Kanpur. He had a nice expression. If you tell him something, he says, who knows, the horse may fly. The horse may fly, okay, so maybe bar OS will take off, we don't know, but I think we need to try. If not, something else will succeed, but you know, we are doing. But look at these startups which have come from IIT alum, Flipka, Upgrad, Ola, Paytm, each one represents just not one startup, a series of startups, okay, Nika, Mintra, all these things would not have happened, but for a Flipkart. And then you have simply learn, not so simply learn, complex learn, okay? And then, you know, Baiju, not so Baiju, Giju, okay? All these things happen after AppGrad, okay? And then, of course, you have Ola, and we have so many of them, you know, right in Bangalore, all the auto drivers have an app, okay? All these things came thanks to Ola. And Paytm, and then there is something else, you know, not you know, something, some pay. Okay, lots of such things happened. So all, see, you have a whole range of the startups that happened this way. And of course, you know, so this is our trumping card time, right? So we, the IIT profs, okay, so we don't want to lose an opportunity to trump our alumni successful. So remember, I'm taking two examples, you know. IBM is a legendary company. For a long, long time, the only computer company in the world that mattered was IBM. And then there was a small little competition from a bunch of companies, used to be called Burroughs, Univac, NCR, Control Data, and Honeywell. All of them put together was not even 10% of IBM, okay? And then, of course, there is a new generation which has completely upstaged IBM, Google, okay? Both of them are run by IIT boys. Right, one from IIT Kanpur, Alvin, and one from IIT Kadapur. Sundar Pichai, right? And you know, we actually do a many interesting stuff. You think that IITs produce only engineers? Yes, we produce engineers, but we also do interesting engineers. Look at Subarav and Raghuram Rajan, right? IIT Kadakpur and IIT Delhi, okay? And then look at Subra. Subra is a very special. He's an IIT Madras product. He was the MIT dean. He was the NSF director. He was the president of Carnegie Mellon and currently is Nanyang Technological University president, right? Across the globe, across stuff, so I just took this example. And of course, I have a special stuff. He happens to be my own MTech student. He's now the minister for IT and railways, Ashwini Kumar Vaishnav, right? So that is, okay. So you might ask, you know, have triple ITs have done something? So I thought that, you know, I should tell you that, look, you know, small way, some interesting stuff have happened. And you know, many times people do not know that, you know, I'm just taking example from IIIT Bangalore because as a director, I have the, I have been involved so I can talk with the direct one instead of indirect stuff. You know, it's interesting. We are executing a project called MOSIP, 
which is Modular Open Source Identity Project. This is Aadhaar-like stuff completely available in open source for many countries. Already three countries, Indonesia, Morocco, and I think Sri Lanka are experimenting with that. So in Indonesia has already issued 40 plus million identities using this. So idea is, see Aadhaar is a closed software built by India for India, but here have open sourced it and make it available to anybody. So it is funded by Bill and Melinda Foundation, Tata Trust, etc. It's about uh, 300 crores of funding, okay? But executed by, I happen to be the PI as a project execution, okay? So something which we could do, and it's interesting. This is now part of what you call digital public goods, which India is creating. So how do you create a digital public good? You know, it's other interesting stuff. Myanmar, you know, Burma, wanted to have an institute for IT. And uh, Japanese actually proposed that they should have an IT institute. But it's very interesting, you know, it's very humbling. The Japanese, uh, the Myanmar minister telling the Japanese that please set up an institute for manufacturing, for IT we'll go to India. Okay, so that's how they came. And the minister during the launch, you know, it, it was executed by IIIT Bangalore, six years, so we, in Myanmar, they still have the old system. The school system is 11 years, so we were actually doing a five-year BTEC program, the one which I went through in 70s, okay? So there's a five-year program. We just completed the fifth year. And you know, once again, it was so satisfying and humbling. The minister put it in a very funny way. Hey, Shadagopan, we have done something together. I said, what is it? He said, you added an I to an IIT. And he says, I added an I to an MIT. That is MIIT, Myanmar Institute of Information Technology. So grounds up complete stuff. At the peak, we had about 30 faculty members from India. Okay. And you know, it's interesting. What fix, you all know WhatsApp. Go and discover what is what fix. What fix is already a $600 million value. It will soon be a unicorn. Started by a first batch alum of IIIT Bangalore. Okay. And in the morning, I was telling my friends that we have a neurosurgeon from Nimhans. He is registered for PhD. He did four courses in computer science, passed all of them with A grade, completed his comprehensive. I felt so happy. Normally, as a director of the institute, I wish all the people who passed their uh, uh, comprehensive. But I took an exception. I took him and his wife out for dinner. I was so happy because honestly speaking, he had suggested that he will do an M uh, he will do a PhD in computer science. We were actually trembling. What happens if this guy fails? You know, we can't compromise on rigor, right? But hats off to him. He did the course as well. He did the company. He already has a patent for doing robotic surgery in the brain. But the robot looks like a snake. It does like this because that's the only way you can do inside a brain. So it's interesting. And we had the most, I had the most satisfying experience of my 22 years at IIIT Bangalore. One day a blind student came with her chikapa. Chikapa is that um, uncle, father's younger brother. And her father's younger brother happens to be a professor at University of Illinois. And then my secretary said, this girl and the chikapa wants to meet with you. I said, fine. So what can I do? As well, he kind of got them, I realized that this girl was a born blind. And Vidya is her name. And then the uncle says that, look, Sharagopan, I want you to consider her for admission to your institute. So I told him, sir, you know how our institutes run. No director, no president, no prime minister can admit a student. They have to go through this. And he said, no, no, I'm not asking you to compromise anything, okay? She will go through all your academic rigor, but she is a born blind student, you have to help her. I said, how can we help her? She already had managed to have done a BSc. We have an MSc program, and I want her to apply for MSc degree, and you don't reject her simply because she happens to be a visually impaired student. Then I told the gentleman, professor, you understand, the directors of institute don't decide many things in institutes. It is finally the teachers, because somebody has to teach her. We don't know how to teach her. So I said, let me talk to my colleagues and come back. We would be happy to do it, because at the heart, I feel so good. 
if I can make a difference. Then I asked this girl, why do you want to do an MSc in IIIT Bangalore? She was absolutely clear. She said, look, sir, this is the problem with many people who are not blind. Think this is what the blind students need. But we, the blind students, know what we need. So we want to design something for you. Then she asked me this question. Sir, do you know Braille? I said, I don't know Braille, but I know of Braille. I understand Braille is a tool by which visually impaired people can read text. And she said, you got it right, but that is precisely what it is. Visually impaired can read text through Braille. But how can visually impaired learn circuit diagram? I said, I don't have an answer. He said, look, that is what I want to create. Here is a person who seemed to know what she wanted. And she said, look, I want to create a startup which will create solution for the visually impaired. Because a lot of times, people who have vision, they assume that this is what people without a vision need and make a mess of it. So we will do it ourselves. And then one of my colleagues, she said that, look, sir, this cause is so dear to me. Let me try. She had a project. She said, we will employ her in a project. Let us see. So we employed her in a project for six months. And she was doing a brilliant job. And then later, and she surprised all of us. In the entrance exam, she, she was the topper. At the graduation, she's the topper. Microsoft Research picked her up, gave her 50 lakhs of money to start something. She runs a company called Vision Empowered. Right? So these are the things which give you energy. Okay, I'm 71. I still run around like crazy. And because you meet people like Vidya. Right? And that's what I was say, say, you made she made my day, right? So I think this is how okay. So what I want to get across is IITs and IIITs have contributed. Okay. And uh, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, a lot has happened. A lot is yet to happen. We have miles to go, but we have come many, many miles. Okay? Let me stop here and take some questions. It is time, 11.31. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for the patient audience. Sure. Please. Thank you. What an honor to start with a question from the Vice Chancellor himself. Thank you, sir. Right. Right. You mentioned about the origin of Triple IT Bangalore. I, of course, I also remember yes. some of the incidents. So you said uh, SM Krishna and Infosys signed right. both signed a check right. and then uh, started doing the Triple IT Bangalore. Similarly, in Hyderabad also. Uh, I know that it is definitely a success story of institution building. Uh, you can, of course, you converted into a deemed to be university. You remember? The, right. I remember that. And I remember but your help. <laughs> 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 the other side, yeah. yes. So uh, it is very important that, uh, of course, we need such collaborations in a significant way, success, such success stories in a very significant way. You are a very extremely positive person who has this thing positively. What, the, what are the things in the present day system for uh, maybe? Uh, preventing or not happening such such industry uh, industry administration marriages for institution building. Probably if you just narrate that story of institution building, it, I asked because I came five minutes late. So I asked uh, Professor Shogaungar whether you have mentioned about Triple IT Bangalore. Of course you mentioned about Triple IT and then even the uh, trials and tribulations in naming that institution. You remember that? Right. Uh, yes. How we Coin triple IT because right. uh, gov government only government institution can make uh, use of uh, Indian. Yes. Indian. Uh, then of course uh, with the Chapriya also I was involved. Right. It, they wanted triple IT cannot be repeated and therefore she went for I squared IT. Yes. I squared IT in Pune. So this is these are all some of the things which the the new generation should know. Right. How we circumvented. Right. How he circumvented such uh, such. 
such a, um, I mean, some sort of objections, some sort right. of objections, and then came with success stories like yes. this. Yes. Probably you can just narrate sure. on this. Okay. So thank you, sir. I think, you know, thank you for uh, kind of talking about. No, you see, it is important to share the positive news so that, you know, you get enthused. But behind that, there are always tears and blood. No ifs and buts about it. So I still remember that after we were two years into the program, we became the deemed university in the fourth year. At the end of the second year, somebody from CAG came and he said, you have not fulfilled these requirements, so I am recommending the dissolution of this in institute. So I got a little shocked. I said, what happened? So then, you know, I called the chief secretary. Chief secretary, sir, just don't lose your coal, nothing much to worry. I said, what happened? You let him write whatever he wants to write. Okay. Later on, I realized there were two secretaries who transitioned in the department. And there was a little fight among the secretaries. So they were actually using my shoulder to fight. Okay? But this is something which you ought to know because this is how the governments function, right? You know? So something and Second thing is, in, in the Indian context, one of the important things is, don't take anything too seriously. Just because a letter comes from CAG, it doesn't mean anything. Okay? A lot of times, you know, this kind of stuff keep happening. That is one part of it. The second part of it is interesting, that, you know, coming back, the corporate sector, okay? See, corporate sector also, until recently, they have never written a check. Okay, at least in, see, I come from Tamil Nadu. So Tamil Nadu, people go to the extent, they will, you will find a temple where they will, on a tube light, they will write their name. They will write their name, such bold letter, hardly any light comes out. <laughs> so what happens is, people are used to giving thousands and tens of thousands to lakhs to tens of lakhs. Writing checks for hundreds of crores is unknown in this country. But things are changing. I think Subrato Bakshi is the first person who has created history. He has written a check for 600 crores, right? And then, of course, our Indigo man has written a check for 1,000 crores to IIT Kanpur. So things are kind of changing. So one. But to tell you, see, what happens is corporate sector is also bogged down in their own. So in the name of efficiency, they do. Okay. So a person like Mr. Narayan Murthy is an amazing person. But even a person like Mr. Narayan Murthy, so, see what happened, they think from a corporate sector. I still remember that I started the institute. S.M. Krishna had said, look, we are giving five crores, you start from tomorrow. But the five crores was not coming anywhere. So, I then asked Narayan Murthy, at least you have promised to give me, so give me your check. He said, no, I will put a condition. I will write the check the day you get it from the government, but not before. In retrospect, it proved to be good for me. I went back to the government and said, this is the condition. So they wrote a check. But to be fair to Mr. Narayan Murthy, he said, don't come to me. I will send it to you. Those days, there was a still check physically, people carrying. So what happens is that it takes a while for people to be able to give a large money. The larger issue, see, the larger issue is that institution building needs a fair amount of complex understanding of Indian working. And, you know, you should understand the role of the bureaucrats. You know, you can't say that, look, who are these IAS officers? Why should I go and meet them? No. Let us face it, IAS officers are very, very important. You can't ask the same question, who is this minister? We elect them. They say, you have elected them, but afterwards they have the full power. You can't do anything with them. So just accept them. So what happens is, you need to be able to kind of work around. And you see, also what happens is that you also, you see, a lot of times, you know, corporate sector today, you see, finally, there is a CFO. The CFO needs a budget head. Unless you find a budget head, you will not get a check. So the CSR is a great example. So like that, you have to imaginatively think of this, okay? So I think broadly what you need is, one is imagination, ability to work with diverse group. Last but not the least, you need to separate these problems from your faculty and students. Faculty and students should never know that you have any problem. 
There are absolutely no problems. That is what you keep telling them, which may not be true. But the idea is not to tell falsehood, but you don't necessarily, because you need to kind of. So in that sense, a vice chancellor director job becomes a kind of a double-edged sword. So you have to keep doing this. But I think, I'm sure in a family, I think our parents have taught us how the mother and the father decide the roles. Okay, you play it, you know, so this is a kind of play. But last thing, sir, this is what I learned from my friends in America, people who run large universities in US. They say that raising money, finding money, etc., are much easier in India than in the United States, even though we think the other way. Okay? I think the respect that, in fact, let me put it this way. One of my Harvard professors told me, he said, Shadagopan, you don't realize that you guys in India enjoy a respect. We, the Harvard professor, are respected, not simply because we are Harvard professors. We make tons and tons of money. You guys don't make tons and tons of money. You are still respected. And much more interesting, your school teachers make far less money, paltry money, but they are still more respected than you. I think that is India. So in that sense, as long as you factor in, there is a larger, uh, what is called social connect, there is a larger social acceptance, okay? But what probably will not work as an institution building is, if you think that you are sitting in ivory tower, things won't work, okay? So you have to take that extra step. But you take one step, they'll take 10 steps. But you need to take the extra step. Sorry for that long answer to your short question. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, myself, Dr. Swati. Uh, so thanks for this, your speech. Um, as you rightly said, this is uh, India tomorrow, which is sitting over here. Yes. And as we are already aware that IITs and IIITs, they have played a lot amount of work. But as you rightly said, that a number of seats are very less. So my request you to give the message to my students who are sitting over here, who are the tomorrow's uh, India. Okay. Thank you. So I, you see, I was just telling Dr. Parvati that um, you know, it is nice to be in IIT, IIM, IIIT, etc. But our numbers are so small. I think institute like Somaya represent the larger ecosystem. You just need, because a country of such a large size, you actually need. And then what you are learning in places like Somaya, okay, I think it's a far more holistic learning. There are no boundaries between the departments. So you actually end up. And I think, you know, I was quite amazed to see you have a school of dharmic studies. You have school of engineering. You have school of management. You have school of allied health sciences. You have a medical college. Make the best use of it. Because our scope in IITs and IIITs are far narrow. But your scope is much bigger. Can you make the best use of it? And then to my faculty colleagues in the departments, please don't put barriers to students. Let students take courses across. We never know which would be useful at what time, right? So somebody who is, you know, today it is interesting. Everything is becoming a science, everything is technology. Who ever thought that sports would become such a big science? Who ever thought that uh, Nike shoes will be a billion dollar company, right? It's fitness, right? It's, so what happens is sports to fitness to health and increasingly, you know, do get a chance to read Satya Nadella's book. Satya Nadella writes a very interesting stuff. Satya Nadella runs a company called Microsoft, right? And uh, he's the CEO. He says that, look, maybe 20, 30 years from now, half the population would be in what is called caregiving business. See, today caregiving means a nurse. But a teacher is also a caregiving. Right? A mentor is also a caregiving. A coach is also a caregiving. So as the robots end up playing more and more with the AI taking over, so I think for 200 years, we human beings have tended to machine. See, even today, with all the smartness of a smartphone, so I have to look up and look at my calendar. I have to organize my time. So why can't the machine read all my mails and, and organize it and telling me in the morning, hey, Shadagopan, this is what you should do today. 
We don't have such thing like that, right? We are tending to the machines. So Satya says, thanks to automation, machines will tend to machines. We will have time to tend to human beings. So the whole, half the planet will become caregiving. So caregiving would be far more important. So are we ready for that? Question is, everybody should have a mentally an agility by which you start taking care of others. So many ways. So caregiving need not be only physical. It could be mental, it could be psychological, it could be thoughtful, it could be ideas, it could be helping somebody to paint. And I think today, I think places like Somaya would be lucky. You should actually aspire not only to produce Nobel laureate, but Oscar winners. And uh, maybe you become the next to Picasso. So the artist and the paints, you know, and you become the sports person, you win some Nobel prizes, win some uh, um, uh, medals, okay? I think what happens is you change your way, and much more important stuff is holistic learning, lifelong learning, and once again, look around, keep looking around, because the diversity is something which is so important. And I think you people are lucky to be part of a university where diversity is just not talked about, but practice, because you have. And my own request to you, sir, you can take this example. You know, Carnegie Mellon is a premier university in Pittsburgh. There's a university of Pittsburgh called UPIT, which is not that premier, but, but nonetheless, each one is a large 30,000 students. But to ensure that students can take courses across, their calendar runs half an hour. One is 9 to 10, 10 to 11, other is 9.30 to 10.30, 11.30 to 12.30, and they run buses in between. Out of the 30,000 plus 30,000, 60,000 students, only 600 students take courses across. But to help those 600 students, they run buses across. Okay, so how do we, that is how they go to the extent of celebrating the diversity, celebrating the people wanting to do. My request is, I think the medical school, the engineering school, and the design school, and the business school, you should work like a seamless school. So remember, go back to the words, the university. University is a place where we have access to universal knowledge. So we should rediscover the roots of a university. And people, let people start doing courses across. So madam, that is what I would request you to do. Encourage people to take courses across. Encourage people to do projects across. So can a medical student and an engineering student do a project together? Can a law student and medical student do a project together? So those kind of stuff, which is so possible for you, which is actually not possible in IIT system or a triple IT system, because we don't have that diversity. So that is what my appeal would be. And again, appeal to all the students, please make the best use of Somaya. Thank you. Hello. Good, good morning, sir. Yes. Thank you for a nice, uh, informative session. As you have concluded, sir, my name is Vimal Modi. Uh, we have come a long way, as you have concluded rightly, uh, but few observations, sure, okay, during the course of my uh, last few years of uh, uh, journey, while helping some students to decide some career or, I mean, uh, admissions and all that. Uh, one thing I realize, you know, the students, the higher education particularly, okay, it becomes very challenging. It is uh, at times I find very exploitive procedures for admission to higher studies, uh, looking at middle class, Indian middle class. Uh, for example, uh, if, if we take a case of MBA admission, for example, many people ask for my advice and guidance on that. Uh, the, there are several of tens of entrance exam which a student has to give, okay? Like the best thing recently happened uh, was IIT main, JE main and JE advance. Right. Where there are two exams club together and depending on the institution which can select either main, uh, main as a starting point or JE. We, we, I mean there is no such things in other spheres. And when a student has to appear for entrance exam to gain admission in 10 different 
um, uh, MBA courses. Not only that, they have to pay 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 worth of fees. They have to write separate kind of essays for admissions. Uh, they have to give separate multiple interviews. And uh, what happens is uh, there is no track like, you know, a student takes admission in multiple institutions and then he has to ultimately choose only one. He is forced to make some advance payment in lakhs, okay, which is waived, I mean, which is gone now. So, uh, I mean, like, point I'm trying to make here is, please share your views whether higher education is, uh, is getting uh, corporatized or is becoming a business uh, kind of a thing, and what can be done for this, I mean, people like you, the senior academicians, what they can do. Uh, to, I mean, take care of such issues. My second point is uh, when I was studying some uh, uh, courses at school level or at engineering level, I realized that if a student, for example, is very good at coding, he wants to make a career in coding only. After 12, they realize this. Uh, even after 10th, nowadays, they start realizing this. He has no option but to study uh, maybe at least 20 different subjects while he completes engineering, and 50% of this is targeted towards hardware industry, okay, which he's not interested in, he's not inclined to do that. So what kind of education systems, if at all, is emerging, or, I mean, India is doing? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I think both are excellent questions. See, the first question, you know, about the multiple entrance exam, this is something where People at different stages, education, administration, all the way to the ministers, to secretaries, are quite concerned. Several of the directors have put together different stuff. Already you would have seen that, you know, this uh, NTA, National Testing Authority, was created a few years back, which conducts the JE now and also the other exam, GATE, etc. So we are, and you know, some flexible, you see, what happened was JE exam. If on that day the boy or a girl who was taking happened to be sick, so, and he or she is not able to make it, one year is lost. To make it up, so JE is now given four times, at least two times during the COVID time, so study. So they are actually giving multiple options. But let me also tell you the other side. I think what happens is, in India, we also take sometimes things too seriously, more than the students, the parents. So what happens is, some student gave the JE exam and just, I would say, got a rank of 8,000. So with 8,000, he or she will get a reasonable branch in reasonable institute. But what happens, the mother forces the student, hey, kuch karo, improve karo. So they take it second time, so that they can try to get. So what is happening is a good number of students end up taking multiple times the exam, even though the original option was basically to help those people who kind of, may, who get into problem because of maybe a road accident here or a train cancellation there or somebody falling sick or he or she is falling sick, okay? So it is a social dimension. And about the larger entrance exams, et cetera, once again, government is attempting to have, you see, at least to some extent, you know, Karnataka government was one of the first to start the central exam, CET. So many states have done it so that most colleges, again, people are trying. But what happens is that, you see, beyond a point, you know, my father used to say that don't waste your time too much in trying to make the bad boys into good boys. Spend your time to make the good boys into better boys. So there is a fair amount of money to be made through entrance exam. And some of the colleges are hell-bent on doing it. So beyond a point, you can't stop because the avarice, the wanting to make money is so much in them. And even yesterday, I was just talking to the vice chancellor and the chancellor that there is a lot of bad money that goes into education. So we can't fight beyond. Let us get bo more good money into education. Hopefully, that good money will kind of flush out the bad money. So, so, so what I'm saying is that beyond a point, you know, whatever you do, they try to find some excuse. But there have been concerted efforts. In fact, the current government, the minister, secretary, etc., are very concerned about, and they are very talk. You know, like um, for the NEET exam, 
they actually managed to get it. You know, there's so much opposition, particularly from my state called Tamil Nadu, but they have been able to do it. They are talking of something similar for the MBS. I do hope they succeed, but it's, it's kind of hard. The second question was? Multiple subjects. Uh, multiple, see, the multiple subjects, you know, it's again a larger social problem. See, India is one country where, okay, I'm an old man, so please kind of, uh, okay, so permit me to make some strong statements. See, lot of parents want to live a new life through their children. So what it means is, I don't want to go to IIT, I don't want to go to IIT, I want to So the child may not be interested, but you kind of force him or her. So I think there is too much of that in this country, particularly among IT professionals, you know. So my question is, if they don't go to IIT and IIM, what is the big deal? But they just make it. So what is happening? That is one part. Second part, I'll give you actual case. I happen to assist a lot of schools. So there is one famous school in Chennai, in Bangalore, called Kumaran School. So one day, I got a request from some teachers, computer science teachers. They wanted to come and meet me. I said, OK, fine. I said, ma'am, what is the problem? So there are three women. They said, look, sir, we have been asked to teach C++. We already are teaching them C. I said, why you have to teach C++? These two seventh grade students. So first of all, C++, but C itself is not the best language to teach the students. You know, you have much better languages. C could be good for machine, but not good for teaching the kids. But what I realized is that particular class there are some 40 plus parents who all go to Vipro. So these parents, out of their concern, they think that this is what their children should know. They go to the teacher. He said, what's the problem? Hai? Computer chahiye, kharid ke de denge. Software chahiye, kharid ke de denge. They give their hardware, they give the software. They think just because they're IT professionals, they know more than the teachers. This is another peculiar problem. Just because I teach in a higher institution, I think that I know the lower institution. This is stupid. I think none of us can teach ever a school teacher, stu a school student. We are only programmed to teach higher education. But school teaching is very different. What is to be taught to the seventh grade is a very different thing. The teachers know it. Unfortunately, because these guys make more money, they are able to put pressure on the management and do it. So finally, luckily, the management listens to me, so I got it off. But not often you are lucky, right? So that is a problem. So this is a more a social problem than to do with the institution itself. So uh, I think, uh, you know, the I would say the parents should unitedly say that, look, you know, you, a, take a country like Norway. You know, the teachers, the school teachers are respected. And they are the people who are paid the highest salary. And they think the school teachers know what is best for the student, which is true. I think we need to respect the school teacher. Unfortunately, we don't. And that is a problem. And remember, even 50 years back, go back to your father's time, mother's time. I think school teachers were respected more at that time. But these days, everyone is measured to how much money you make. And that is a problem. Because school teachers don't make money, we don't respect them enough. OK? So I'm sorry, I have not answered your question fully. But that's all I know. OK? Thank you. So you tell me when to stop, otherwise, you know, we professor go on talking. So you one more question? Sorry, yes. Professor. You wanted to have one question? Yes. Mike, please. please. So I wanted to, so was raising yeah. his hand. Yeah, so sure. that'll be the last question. Okay. Hmm. You, you told that uh, it's, uh, credits. Yes. And choice-based credit system started. Right. I mean, it's given by IITs. Right. And uh, of course, I was a, I mean alumni of IIT Bombay, yes. so I have um, uh, gone through that uh, process. Uh, I want to know the now the NP is at doorstep. Uh, it's going to be implemented. It's implemented in some of the states, right. partially, fully. It's in right. process. It will take time. Right. At the same time, I wanted to know the status of interdisciplinary studies and multidisciplinary studies in IITs. Right. Especially. Okay, see, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary studies, 
is starting to happen only now. See, to some extent, I tell you, the NEP has been a big, uh, I would say, blessing in disguise for many of these things, because at the country level, we are kind of doing it. But I think we still have a long way to go. We are not doing enough. I think the engineering students do not look at beyond engineering departments for the courses. And across the sciences, across the social sciences, et cetera, is still far from true. But I think it is happening a little bit, partly because I think, you know, I would say that one of the good things is that as parents, we all will realize our children and grandchildren listen to us less. It has its own plus point. We were blindly listening to our parents. Our children and grandchildren do not. So that is a saving grace. Okay? So they will put pressure on faculty to kind of open up. Because, you know, it's a two-way, right? So as they say, it takes two to a tango. So but once the demand is happening, so it will happen. But I think much more interesting is that all institutes or across the IITs now are recognizing the need for interdisciplinary studies and we are increasingly kind of starting to work with and even some of the large projects, you know, like DST's big project, which is all into hundreds of crores, many of those things are interdisciplinary, which are forcing also inter-institutional, you know, the cyber or the cyber physical security. So those projects, there are about 16, 17 such projects of DST, all of them are inter-institutional. So we are going beyond interdisciplinary to inter-institutional. And I think it will be nice, you know, I jokingly tell people that American universities have all the departments. That is what is called design by hardware. India will do it by software. Place like I ate Bangalore. You have IIM, you have a triple IT, you have IISC, you have National Law School, you have NID, okay? And imagine that students can take courses across. And then, you know, through software we can control, et cetera, et cetera. And we are seeing close to it. Already, at least among the three institutes, a lot of courses are offered across. And I think right now, it is an exception. So soon it will become a mainstream. But I think we see the trends happening. I do expect more of that to happen. Thank you. As I said, I am an incorrigible optimist. So, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you all. And a big thank you for all of you for such patient listening. So thank you so much for that IIIT uh, lecture, insightful, interesting, inspiring, and tempering session to aim us big and also to be true to the word, India's tomorrow. Uh, so I would request you to come again to the stage because I thought you would be going this side. We need to felicitate you, sir. Uh, may I request Dr. Uh, Professor Pillay, our Vice Chancellor and the brainchild of Somaya public lecture to please honor our guest. As soon as he comes, go there. Thank you so much, sir. Now may I request Dr. Suresh Akrande, Principal KJ Somaya Institute of Engineering and Information Technology to please deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to all of you. Being in audience, I always feel whether the person who is giving vote of thanks speaks more than the speaker. So I'll be very brief. In a couple of minutes, I'll uh, complete my job. 
you have heard today's speaker, Professor Sadagopan, who is director of IIIT Bangalore. Uh, when uh, we, we were talking outside uh, about the transformation of education system in India and what he has narrated in last almost one hour, the sentence is what he has used, which I like more. We generally say we have to go a long way. We say simply this thing only. Many times, many speakers I heard, we have to go a long way. But he said, we have come, up, come a long way and still we have to go a long way. And it's still it is, it's there on the board. Lot many has happened and lot many things is going to happen. And that's what the uh, development of country like India has happened. We have done lot, 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 lot of development has happened and still we have to go a long way. And the main instrumental part for this development of India, with due respect to all sectors, it's the IT sector. He talked about three T's. T, one T for T, other T for textile, and third T for technology, or IT. And he has told about the transformation of, transformation of many institutes like IITs, IIMs, and in few days, I mean, what we expect at SOMA institutions under the leadership of our own chairman, Sri Samir Somaya, who always appreciates, motivates to all individual faculty, individual institute to do anything for the holistic development of the students. And today's speaker, he has taught in two institutes, IIT and IIM. To me, every individual faculty at the institute, in IITs or IIMs, he himself or herself is an institute. And we have heard, we are lucky enough to listen to a eminent person like Professor Sadagopan. So on behalf of Somaya institutions, on behalf of all of us, we, I, we thank for his excellent lecture on this transformation of higher and technical education in India, post-independence. We have with us two eminent persons, I'll say again, institutes. Professor Pillai, Vice Chancellor of Somaya Vidyavar University, and this public lecture series of his brainchild, as Dr. Parati said, our initiative, and guiding each and every institute, in the, each and every faculty and students for their development, and other institute, Professor Shivgaukar, who was from IIT Bombay, and uh, you know very well his uh, contribution in the technical education, higher education. So two institutes are there within our SOMA Institute to motivate us, guide us. And one uh, few years down the line, let's see, SOMA Institute it's, itself be uh, near to one of the IITs. So with this, and the faculty members, staff members, students, and the principals and directors of all SOMA institutions are here to uh, listen to this talk. And I thank each and everyone, and of course, Dr. Parvati to connect each one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Because very rarely we, we, he doesn't thank himself. So thank you so much, Dr. Suresh, sir. And also thank you, special thanks to students who came from Ayurvihar. I know it disrupted your academic, but still then you came. Thank you so much. I will leave you with a powerful quote by Dr. Abdul Kalam. Thinking is a capital. Enterprise is a way. Hard work is a solution. There is no other solution. Have a great, impactful day.